Good evening, everyone. I'm Ben Marinas. I'm Ethan Miller, and as you will see shortly, our show is full of new and interesting stories brought to you by our very own Hempfield students. This includes a look into the workings of our district's flight team. The many ways students are volunteering for their community. And one Hempfield graduate's journey to Hollywood. It's the May Show for Hempfield Happenings. So let's spring right into the news. Food is typically associated with the cafeteria. However, that's not the only place you can grab a quick snack. Here at Hempfield High School, several vending machines are available for students to purchase a variety of snacks and drinks. An underlying reason behind them being introduced has come to light. A lot of people don't understand that we are not, we're not funded by the school. Everything comes out of the school food service, so we have to make our own money. For us to be able to provide a good, healthy meal, we need to have income from somewhere else. So we have to sell the snacks and the snack item to be able to keep our school prices down and to be able to pay our bills that we have. The school uses the money from the vending machines to better serve their students through the food services, as well as other outlets. Students wishing to buy certain items are sometimes stalled with an out-of-stock message. How the machines are kept stocked is different for every type of machine. They work pretty good, but sometimes the products in them are a little like outdated or they aren't in there, so you have to pick something else that you didn't originally want. My employees, she checks them on a weekly basis, checks dates, makes sure that there's no out-of-date product, and we try to make sure that we're rotating and keeping good quality product within the machines. The snacks and drinks available serve as a tool to keep students on task and satisfied. Uh, I think they're very convenient, and it helps a lot when you're like hungry, but lunch is like two periods away or like a period away, so you can just get a quick snack. You know, you never know when a student's going to get hungry. Uh, if a student's really hungry at any time of the day, um, I don't want them thinking about being hungry. I want them to be in class thinking about doing their work. We're working with our food services to try to find some ways in which we can have some healthy options for the, for the students kind of throughout the day. The convenience is that when we're not here, what I would love to have, and hopefully someday we're financially able to, I would much rather have a snack machine that I could put um, sandwiches made fresh daily um, so that our students that play sports or that are in band or activities after school could come and get a meal and something nice and good for them to eat. Students utilizing the vending machines aren't just satisfying their stomachs, but they satisfy a greater cause throughout the school, such as keeping school lunch prices low. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Ava Keller. Sometimes, tragedies happen that shake the lives of both students and faculty. Flight teams are designed to handle a variety of these disastrous situations. Brandon Kanke was able to learn more about how they function. Hey, Eddie, how are you? Oh, I'm all right. How are you, Mr. Stuck? Pretty good. I can't complain. BBC reported that 113 people were either killed or injured in the United States from school shootings in 2018. Along with these terrible occurrences, there are other smaller scale traumatic events that happen in schools across the country every day. Whether an incident is accidental or purposeful, human inflicted or a natural disaster, students need support. Hemfield has a process for occurrences just like these. We have an in-house within our district, we have what's called um, the crisis team uh, or flight team. Uh, and what that is, it's it's made up of counselors, school psychologists, administrators, uh, and we work together um, to create a plan um, to support the needs of the students during a tragedy. A former Hemfield student and soccer player passed away almost two years ago, which had a major impact on the high school. 
especially on the girls' soccer team. The district responded immediately by activating the flight team. What the counseling department through the flight team was able to do is set up LG1 uh, for us where we reached out to the, to the team, told them to come down to LG1. I remember being eerily quiet, like really quiet, and people just you know, kind of thinking within themselves. And quite a few players got were emotional. And um, the flight team was instrumental in trying to help us just process that day, which is what I think is the hardest thing to do when you lose anybody. Although counselors have a process to help out students, being there for a friend through tough times can be beneficial as well. Being able to listen, uh, being able to be kind, and you know everybody has kind of their own grieving process. So when one person may uh, feel like they're okay or it seem that they're okay, their pro grieving process is going to be different than that person who's upset and visually uh, distraught. Um, I think giving giving people some grace in their grieving process can really help. Flight teams are a great example of how communities come together and support one another during times of tragedy. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Brandon Kanke. You know, Ben, it's really great how our counselors here at Hemfield really give back to their community. You're right, Ethan. But the students also get their hands dirty when it comes to volunteering. Maddie Olson saw firsthand how GAIN works with high school volunteers. In Hempfield, students will find every opportunity to help others. Even a small group of students will go out of their way to come here and give back. For this trip, the students went to GAIN, a global aid network. But this is just one of many small events where students get to go out and volunteer. I try to provide a few experiences each year of volu volunteer aspects. This happens to be one of them. So the gifted students are here to um, pack blankets and sort blankets for refugees like overseas and stuff. Smaller service events are able to avoid the obstacles that group volunteering faces. We're somewhat at the mercy of, uh, to be a bit cliche, the finances, right? The real world aspects. So the larger population size, you know, bus transportation, and it's costly. So um, rather than doing maybe one or two really large events, we try to take some sm smaller events and just smatter them throughout the school year. Even just small events are important to the students who volunteer. You know that you're making a difference in someone else's lives even though like you're not directly like interacting with them. Beyond giving back, these events are an opportune time for students to broaden their horizons. Well sometimes you see students who are willing to step outside their comfort zone and I think that's really where growth occurs. So it allows probably 80 percent of the students behind me to meet someone who they would not otherwise have met. Yeah, I think it's cool for like a group of people who don't really know each other that well to work on something special like this because it's like different from like a classroom setting. The ways volunteering broadens the students' horizons isn't constrained to just the people around them. The students can better their understanding on a global scale. So I think going through and volunteering for organizations and helping um, people that are not always um, or the forefront of the news um, I think it really gives you an idea of what's happening in the world around you. Um, at, you know, at the secondary level of grades 9 through 12, you typically see two, three, six feet in front of you. And so when you come to a place like this and you're like, wow, like a blanket allows someone to have or dine or eat, then I think that's a great thing. You know, don't, what does it cost us, an hour and a half of our time? No matter how small, every act of kindness is worth the effort. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Maddie Olson. Elementary school students also get involved with volunteering. Ariana De Jesus spoke with those involved in Hempfield's Jump for Thon. A handful of years ago, the elementary PE teachers of Hempfield decided to work with Jump for Thon to help raise money for Minithon. So Jump for Thon is a mini fundraiser the students can raise money for Minithon, and then they earn a t-shirt at the end as a thank you gift, sort of. So in PE, in the elementary gym, we tie it in with our jump rope unit, so the students jump as many times as they possibly can as their contribution to a fundraiser. So each school does it a little bit differently, but here at East Petersburg, the students in grades kindergarten through sixth grade are trying to jump as many times as they can during our mini-thon. 
So they keep track different ways. The younger kids keep track on a piece of paper. Our older students keep track on their iPads. And then at the end, they tally up their total number of jumps. The reason why I donated to kids who have cancer, it's not because I have a tea get a t-shirt. It's because kids that need help. The reason I donate is probably because um, my family's fortunate enough to donate and it would help other kids. Um, the reason I donate it is to help like children with cancer to get enough money. From Henfield Happenings, I'm Ariana De Jesus. We sure do have some amazing students here. In fact, Joseph Wentling took volunteering a step farther when he was nominated for an award. He wasn't just nominated, Ethan. He won the President's Volunteer Service Award. Here's Lance Kim with more details on his incredible triumph. Hempfield strives to promote a dedicated and hardworking environment for staffs and students alike. This attitude can be one seen throughout the community. Meet senior Joseph Wentling, who was recently awarded the prestigious President's Volunteer Service Award for his outstanding services to his community. The President's Volunteer Service Award is awarded to hundreds of students nationwide who volunteer hundreds of their own hours by helping others. There are three levels, bronze, silver, and gold. Joseph received the gold award for his services to the community. Sort of just tell me like what this award means to you. I really appreciate getting the award because it's really nice to get recognized for the work that I've put in but I don't need the award. I really just enjoy getting out in my community and being involved, but it's really rewarding to finally get some recognition. The recognition of Joseph's services is one held in high regard around the district, especially for Principal Daig. I met Joseph, uh, I got into lacrosse, and uh, so I helped out coaching a little bit, and uh, he was always just a great kid, um, helping other student athletes out, uh, playing as hard as he could, just watching him have, have a good time, be a good teammate. Uh, that, that's kind of what I remember about him. Joseph winning the award is uh, huge, not only for our district, but I think first and foremost for Joseph. Uh, he's put a lot into um, everything that he's done to try to get um, people a little bit more of a service. Uh, everything that he's done has been service oriented for other people, whether it be through the Red Cross or just giving this time to any other charity that's out there. Um, so for us as a district, it's great that uh, our name gets kind of put out there and people know that our students are doing great things, not just here at school, but for their community and, and giving back to the community. Even with Joseph leaving Hempfield, helping others remains his priority. Uh, I'm going to be going to University of Alabama next year. And after that, I hope to go to medical school and enter the medical field. That way I can help people for a living. Joseph's dedication and passion towards his goals and community remains a model for other students around the country. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Lance Kim. Speaking of students winning awards, how about the Pipkins winning Family of the Year for tennis? It truly is an amazing feat, and luckily for us, Riley Klepper got to talk to the Pipkins themselves. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's up on Where is it? Chasing Ted. The United States Tennis Association awards outstanding members of their community every year at their annual conference. And this year's Family of the Year award was given to the Pipkin family from right here in Landisville, Pennsylvania. Mm, director of Tennis at Hemfield Rec Center. State your name. Oh, Wilson Pipkin. <laughs> 36 years. Wow. I teach sixth grade at Roarstown Elementary. <laughs> I am a studio director at the Philly Arts Center in Philadelphia. I teach fifth grade at Ross Elementary. And I am a director and production manager for a media company in D.C. Though they all loved to play tennis, the reasons for starting were a little different. I started when I was like seven. I just kind of started on my own, hitting against a wall or begging people to hit with me when I was in Texas. So that's how I got started. What about you, dear? <laughs> I started when I was like 35, <laughs> something like that, I think. So she could wear a tennis skirt? Yeah, because I really like that. The new clothing I can have. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's not true. That is true. Yeah, it is true. It is. <laughs> the Family of the Year Award is awarded to a family that has given back the most to the program. It's a volunteer award. Yeah. Pretty much. So we are being how? recognized for, like, our 
playing of the game, but also just volunteering within the sport. How much, how much you give back to the sport. Yeah. But this isn't the first award they've won for tennis. I remember my first award when I won the the 10 and under, that, right? Right. That seemed Central pretty Penn. big to me. Central um, Penn? Yeah, Central Penn. Break number one. Yeah. In 10 and unders. <laughs> <laughs> cool or small. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys win that when you were 10? No. Great. No. <laughs> in college, I got 100 wins, and that's like kind of a rare thing in college tennis. So that was a big deal. Playing a sport like tennis can be very beneficial. I think like um, playing tennis, especially in the Hempfield area, just first of all, especially at Hempfield Rec, just lets us know and gets us to know a lot of people in the community and a lot of people in the tennis community. Um, but then, obviously, when you're playing in high school and things like that, you're meeting different people in different grades through the sport of tennis, which I think is a pretty special experience. Well, tennis is interesting, too, because, like, if you play soccer or lacrosse or whatever, you need almost, like, a whole team to go play, whereas, like, tennis, you can play... With one other person. One other person. You can play when you're 50 or 60 or 70. Like, you can mm -hmm. play... Forever. For a lifetime. For a lifetime. The sport of a lifetime. <laughs> the Pipkin family has gained a lot from the game of tennis and has given back so much more. They truly have earned the award of Family of the Year. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Riley Klepper. Hempfield graduates make accomplishments in many different ways, and Mark Fusco is no exception. Mr. Fusco recently released his new film, The Samuel Project. Abby Minnick shows how he went from Hempfield to Hollywood. I began to realize that I, I needed to work harder than I think everybody else. At least I told myself that. Everyone has their own unique story. A Hempfield alumni, Mark Fusco, would understand that better than anyone. Originally a music prodigy in high school, to now a successful director premiering a movie in his own hometown. Mark Fusco originally worked as a reader for MGM, an American media company, as an intern. Eventually, he found his way to the Amblin Entertainment Center, where he worked for Steven Spielberg. I was a production assistant for an entire year and was uh, hired by Steven himself and his team to work for him directly as his production assistant. And then I was uh, promoted a couple years later. I like watching like the behind the scenes clips and that always really got me super interested. I wasn't too interested in the glamour part of Hollywood, but I was just interested in the process and just watching and seeing everything they were doing behind the camera. In college, Fusco had to shoot his footage on film, resulting in having to edit in a tedious process called tape to tape. So we would have uh, we'd have like a couple rolls of film. They're each, you know, probably 30, 40 bucks a roll. Shooting on film was expensive. It had taught me how to become sort of an efficient storyteller, you know, and a good editor, and uh, which helped me become a better director and a better writer. So I ended up working super hard, harder than anybody I could see around me because I, I, I felt like I needed to catch up to everybody who had more experience than me. Fusco not only worked hard in college, he also excelled throughout high school, impressing his teachers along the way. Mark was, Mark was a great student. As I said, you, he's one of the types of kids that you just hope come all the time, that every kid is like Mark was. It's tremendously rewarding to see a a former student achieve what he's achieved. He was Steven Spielberg's assistant. If Mark would have said, Mr. Powers, you know, I'm thinking of going into film. I might have asked him a couple questions. Are you sure, you know? Is this exactly what you want to do? And if you love it, you have to do that. There was, there was time when I went between music and, and film. And there was probably, a, there's a moment where I feel it was probably my, my sophomore year where I was like, you know, and I'm at the crossroads now, should I really dive into the film thing or should I do what I know and I'm good at music? Um, but I guess my heart wasn't into, I felt there were less challenges in the music stuff because I had done so much of it. Mark Fusco's latest movie, The Samuel Project, was showcased in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where Fusco grew up. During his visit, he spoke with Hemfield students interested in the same career path. The entertainment industry is so competitive. It's like every little corner you need to just find uh, your, your what little wedge you can do any opportunity any little thing like work so hard as long as it's towards something you love and that's what I ended up doing and I look back and I realized I was one of the few people in my class that stuck with it Mark Fusco's unique story is one that will truly live on in Lancaster's history and to those he impacted most from Hempfield Happenings I'm Abby Minnick
Hey Ethan, you know what we haven't talked about yet? Sports? Sports. Here at Hempfield, we have many great athletes, but Aiden Power might just be on a different level. Here's Zach Roto with a scoop on how Aiden stands out. The 2018 to 2019 Hemfield football season ended back in November. However, there are currently still players going above and beyond to make sure they come back top notch next year. Sophomore Aiden Power started at center and nose tackle for varsity this past season. Aiden won Rookie of the Year, Lineman of the Week, and was a section all-star honorable mention. While he may be a beast now, that hasn't always been the case. When I was, when I was eight, I was sort of a short, fat guy. Uh, I couldn't run, I could barely, you know, jog. I was always last on the laps and stuff in practice. And um, when I started boxing, it really um, turned things around for me. I became more of an athlete. Boxing is a lot of uh, endurance and fitness and um, a lot of toughness because you're getting punched in the face. So that's all good. But the most important thing about boxing is that it improves your footwork. Uh, footwork is really important on the football field. So that's helped me a great deal. You can't play football year-round, you can only play football in the fall, so I think it's good to find some, some other way to compete. The constant support from others is what continues to keep Aiden moving in a positive direction. Well, ever since he was young, you know, I've always been, to one degree or another, a coach of sorts to him. You know, when he played baseball as a kid, I was always his coach. Um, you know, when it comes to boxing, you know, I taught him to box. Uh, when he was little and took him into the gym for the first time and stuff. So really at this point now You know, we just drive him around the stuff, you know as far as supporting him goes <laughs> Typically at the beginning of each year or each season that he's starting a sport, you know We will talk about goals that he maybe has team wise and personally he had set the goal um, You know winning lineman of the week at least once this year. He managed to do that and he wanted to be a section all-star, you know, as a sophomore, and he accomplished that as well as, you know, with an honorable mention. So, yeah, I mean, shoot, you know, I'm his dad. Couldn't be prouder. Golden Gloves Gym is owned by Olympic boxing coach Barry Stumpf. Stumpf has worked with and met many famous boxers, such as Floyd Mayweather Sr. and world champion Michael Moore. Aiden has stood out to Barry after knowing him for years. He, he has what it takes, you know, it's his choice to play football and I, I don't want to get in the way of that, but uh, do I want him to box? Oh yeah. <laughs> we, had, we, had a, we had a kid here, an older guy, and he says, uh, yeah, I'll work and move around with him. So he comes in and Aiden like kind of floors him, you know, he says, you know, man, the guy's been boxing for a couple of years. I said, the kid's 14 years old, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> When he leaves boxing, he goes straight to football and what he has to do. And when he comes back to boxing, he gives it everything he has. Aiden Power has become the athlete that he is today thanks to years of boxing training, as well as his self-motivation to become the best at what he does. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Zach Rhoda. Wow, Aiden's success sure is inspiring. I wonder if we have a whole team just as dominant. Well, Ethan, Lauren Egger will answer that question in her story on the Hemfield Boys Lacrosse Team. This year's special for Hemfield's Boys Lacrosse Team. They have six players with college commitments, five of which are to Division I schools. For lacrosse, a Division I school is based off of um, the classifications in college. You have D1, D2, and D3. Division I is the highest level of competition. A Division I school can also offer you scholarship money as far as athletics. Division two can as well, division three cannot. Division one are your main schools like Penn State, Notre Dame, Maryland. So it's just playing at the highest level that you possibly can for lacrosse. A lot of the commitments come from their club teams. The high school coaches really aren't involved with the division one or division two or division three recruiting. The college recruiting actually comes from the clubs. You won't see a lot of college coaches at a high school lacrosse game unless the kid is already, or the player has already been committed to the team. Grayson Degg is a member of the Hemfield lacrosse team who is committed to a Division I school. I'm going to Cleveland State University, and um, their head coach, Coach Sheridan, he actually contacted my club coaches, 
they kind of got me interested in there, so I kind of checked it out a little bit, looked at what programs they had, and then um, got to do a prospect day with the coach and then talked with him about the recruiting process. What I do to try to help them out is, is just keep them you know, level-headed, make sure that they understand, yeah, it's a great thing that they've achieved, but we still have a lot of work to do as a team. I would say the team atmosphere is pretty good, actually. Uh, everybody seems to get along, and um, there's really no like me ball, which is like club ball. Um, no one-on-one -on -one or anything. It's mostly just team ball now. I'll tell you what, there's a, it's a special group of athletes that have been working really hard for a long period of time. This group is the first group from around this area that really got involved in club lacrosse outside of the central PA area and went to Philadelphia. A couple of them went down to Maryland where the competition's maybe a little stiffer um, and they got worked themselves into the position where they're now Division One recruits. Through hard work and perseverance of the lacrosse team here at Hemfield, a multitude of commitment opportunities for great schools is presented to the team. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Lauren Egger. Now hold on. All this talk about Hemfield students this and Hemfield students that, where are the teachers going to get their time in the spotlight? Well, they already have been. Casey Crayer takes us on a look at Dr. Red K and her achievement with elementary school students and the STEM program. So I'm going to be looking for kids who are following great, like, great instructions, like you're following directions and listening. It's not very often that teachers get international recognition for the job that they do. But that's not the case for one second grade Landisville Primary Center teacher, Dr. Jessica Redke. I've been teaching for the Humfield School District for over 13 years and I started out in kindergarten and I've been teaching second grade and then I get the opportunity to teach at college some evenings too. But then Dr. Red K got recognition for her work in the field of science, technology, engineering, and math by earning the Pennsylvania Elementary Teacher Excellence Award and, eventually, the International Elementary Teacher Excellence Award in Atlanta, Georgia. I received the um, Teacher Excellence Award in the area of like STEM education because I was fortunate enough to work with the district on starting their STEM pilot program last year in elementary. And so I got a chance to do that with another teacher and then we kept like expanding on it and helping with okay. those things along okay. the way. After winning the award, Dr. Redke received the first female robot ever produced by Robokind, which she uses to help teach her students in the classroom. Its name is Robin, and yes, it talks. Hi, I'm Robin from Robokind. I help Dr. Red K teach. So this is Robin, and she's from Robokind, and I use her with my Girls Who Code Club. She's the first female robot that was issued from the company, and we get a chance to use her. We can um, code her. We use block coding with her, and so you can have her say um, different things. And then the, the girls in the club spend like an hour every week learning how to code her, and they taught lessons to younger grades. Principal Mr. Ron Swatner can attest to Dr. Red K's high character and teaching ability. She's an innovator. She really uh, has taken on the technology initiative, the drive for technology. She continues to push herself in learning more about it. And uh, her goal, just like many of the staff members, they're trying to bring that uh, to, the, to the students in the classroom. I like doing STEM, which is science which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And it's really fun. And I like how Dr. Red K always has fun things to do in class. So how would Dr. Red K describe herself as a teacher? I think just passionate. I really care about what I do. And I, I appreciate that I got this award. But really, for me, it's just about being here for my students and helping them. And when they're successful, then I feel successful as a teacher. And I just try to provide them with every like opportunity that I can, um, just to provide them with those like fun, engaging activities. Even after earning an international award, Dr. Red K's goal for students still remains the same as does her drive to help them succeed. I'm Casey Kreider. Wow, Ben. I'm so proud of the achievements our district has made. Of course, but I'm also proud of all the hard work our classmates put in making this month's show. To see more of these amazing stories, be sure to tune in for next month's episode. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Ben Marinas. And I'm Ethan Miller.